Hi guys, this is Chris, the Humble Pepper, and tonight we're actually going to be talking about soil and the lifeblood to all life that it is. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing, okay, is that we're going to have a look at what destroys the soils and and then we'll take a look at what we can do to put those back right again. So the first one, let's see if you can see it, no, number one, okay, over cultivation, sorry if my uh, writing is very, very small, well, you can just about see it, can't you? Over cultivation basically means growing too many times in the same soil and not putting anything back into the soil that would remineralize it. So in organics, okay, in biodynamics, they continually work to promote soil health, okay, and they do that by, uh, in biodynamics, um, they, they grow mostly to um, green manure their soils. Green manure doo -doo -doo -doo. green manure is basically um, crops which they plant okay to uh, add back into their soil it fixes things like nitrogen into their soil which is uh, vital to plant growth okay the second one okay is is basically um, erosion Okay, so erosion is another as a another soil threat, and erosion basically can be in the form of wind erosion, um, too much water washing uh, soil minerals away, and even UV damage from the sun. So the sun can dry out the the soil, then the wind comes along and takes the the dusty soil off off those uh, plains where you're growing or wherever you're growing. Okay, so erosion is, is, a, is a big problem as well. Okay, another problem is actually uh, pests and diseases. Alright, and pests and diseases come when basically the whole cycle of, of that area, which is known as its microclimate, is out of balance in some way so you need to address the problem before it you know you're able to get rid of these things pests usually um, come you know like a, an infestation of say aphids is because you haven't got enough uh, you know other insects within your garden or the area in which you're growing uh, to counteract those numbers, so ladybirds eat, or ladybugs eat those things, don't they, the aphids? And things like diseases come when the climate's completely out of whack, which is happening more and more. Okay, so there's number three. So we've got over-cultivation, erosion, and pests and diseases. Uh, number four, alright, is another one that we did, we covered last time, which is basically synthetics, okay? Synthetics harm your soil. They destroy the microorganisms within the soil. They break down soil structures and basically, more importantly, you know, if you're, if you're eating plants from the soil, um, then you're not going to want to put any bad things into your body. You're probably doing it already for your own health, um, and maybe because it's cheaper. Um, but, you know, synthetics are not a good thing within a soil. They're not sustainable for one thing, all right? They were man-made, and uh, they were refined, okay? And anything which has been refined is usually not very good for us, okay? Especially in larger quantities. So, synthetics. Okay, so what can we do to improve upon these things then? Overall, okay, what matters is your soil, alright? Your soil is basically the lifeblood of your plants, okay? And 
you look after your soil, your soil will look after your plants, and your plants will look after you. Alright? So, looking after the soil is very, very important. We can remineralize it over cultivation, okay? And we can do that by adding a product called Rock Dust Fertilizer. You can go on Google and you can search in your country, local area for Rock Dust Fertilizer. And it's actually a, a quarry byproduct at the moment, um, you know, which is just usually discarded most of the time. Anyway, okay, but that can, you know, you can actually get away with only applying it once every 10 years in some cases, um, which is which is great. I mean, that's a, a cost saving already, isn't it? All right, and um, it adds all of the trace minerals and all of the ma major minerals back into your soil, and those will make your plants grow like crazy, okay? And they'll also give you vitamins and minerals to put back into your body. Erosion, you can counteract that by mulching. So, uh, mulching, so you can go to a local tree surgeon or arborist in your area, okay? And you can, you can negotiate a price or maybe they give it to you for free for a, a trailer load or whatever, you know, because they have to get rid of it usually. So, uh, it's not usually that expensive for a, tra a whole trailer load, you know, maybe hmm, between 40 and 100 pounds, I don't know, something like that, maybe even cheaper. Alright, so mulching will counteract erosion and proper drainage will also, okay, so if you live in a high rainfall area, you're going to need to, um, you might even need to install underground irrigation, which is perforated pipe okay which you can find online again and again it doesn't cost too much and it'll, it'll basically drain your cultivating you know the, the the area which you're trying to cultivate completely off all right but of course when it rains you're not going to get flooding anymore which it's not worth it okay you can lose your whole crop from flooding and you can lose your whole crop from erosion all right Pests and diseases, the best way to counteract this is to look at what is going on within your, uh, your, your microclimate, okay? Uh, which we will cover in another video. But usually there is a, an imbalance going on within your garden. And uh, you can counteract that by adding beneficial insects, beneficial microbes... Uh, different features to your garden, so different design features, and um, maybe even in some cases different minerals, that kind of thing. All right, so you need to change your microclimate to to address those two. All right, and synthetics, use organics, things like um, green manures, which are cover crops. Okay. Uh, think you know like red clover or um, I can't remember any of the others but there are tons of them if you search again on Google for green manures I'm sure you'll find loads um, if you need to use synthetics okay for whatever reason try and use them as you know as minimal uh, minimally as you can so that you can get away with damaging your environment around where you're trying to cultivate permanently um, there are many natural alternatives to synthetics, like I was saying to you in the last video, okay, I believe, um, which you can, you know, you can usually eat or drink yourself, so, I mean, you can't do it with, with these things usually, but you can do them with the natural alternatives. <sighs> okay, guys, so, I hope that was of use to someone out there again. If you want any kind of video lesson, all right, remember that I'm at university learning this stuff and I really would love to teach the world, okay, and, and maybe even one day become a teacher myself, um, about plants, about how to make things grow better, about how to give yourself the green finger or the green thumbs, whatever you want to say, okay? I want to make sure that you can grow your own food 
or grow for your own pleasure. So things like flowers or shrubs, you know, I want to be able to uh, give people in the end maybe some kind of a, a service that they can they can access through me where I come and perhaps design their garden for them uh, for, you know, a fair price. Um, I'm, you know, I really want to concentrate, if I can, on edible landscaping, which is my area of um, interest. Alright, so um, take care guys and have a great evening out there. Remember to post below any video suggestions that you would like. Have a great evening.